Hey. All right, so today I'm going to continue our um, quarantine uh, series. And today I'm going to focus on beer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a growler, uh, kind of a bigger one. But my uh, inspiration for this is uh, old um, brake fluid uh, can. So I thought that'd be <clears throat> kind of cool, and, and I'll do like a stencil on there, make it look like a, an old brake fluid can. So yeah, uh, we'll get started. This is thrown in two pieces, and then a little hand, handle is added on. Um, <clears throat> it's basically going to be uh, a large cylinder body with a funnel-shaped uh, thing of my doodle on it. Let me see if I can find one here. So this is this is kind of what it looks like. It's just a big. This one is going to be like a gallon size one. Um, I've got some other ones that are smaller that are like the 32 ounce growlers. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of what it'll look like when it's done. Um, just pretty fun to throw. So let's get to it. <clears throat> of clay here. Um, this is for like the gallon sized one. Uh, the clay that I'm using is like super super soft so we'll see how this goes. It's not really good for throwing bigger stuff. I think five pounds is probably about the limit for this. I mean it's just it's just goop, really. Um, my last order must have been like a really fresh batch or something because it's really, really soft, high water content. So just um, centering this down. I don't really measure these. I <clears throat> I just uh, throw them down, um, get the bottom nice and thin, so I don't have to trim it, and then um, and then I just pull it out to like kind of a comfortable uh, diameter. to compress the bottom on these. I let them firm up on the on the masonite bats and if um, you don't compress the bottom really well it'll pull apart while it's drying. So I'll just finish opening this up just a wee bit more here. There we go. Compress the bottom from the outside in. rip to finish compressing. Alright. <clears throat> I just um pull up into a big cylinder here. I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra um, meat around the rim because uh, we're going to make a little seat for the uh, top part to go into.
<clears throat> I have to work really carefully with this clay since it's so soft. It really wants to come out into a bowl when I'm throwing, so. Supporting the lip with my thumb, with my uh, left finger or left hand thumb, while I'm pulling up so it doesn't turn into a bowl. Press the rim. <clears throat> So now I'm going to strengthen up these walls with the rib, bring them out just a hair. for a straight walled cylinder. So we'll continue with the next part. Get some of this moisture out of here. Now I just um, <clears throat> I use the corner of my rib here and kind of support with my my uh, thumb and um, pointer finger and middle finger brace it and then I go about halfway in here and just bring it down and get this little lip going around the outside here. I'm just gonna go down a little bit more. <clears throat> it out a little bit and then roll it up and under there and I'll use the pointy part of my rib to kind of press it into place there. There we go. And then on the bottom part when we remove the little buttress there and put our foot in kind of do the same thing. I just use my pointy uh, trim tool and come down a little bit like that. And I use a sponge and roll that one into place. Usually come back through with this and touch up the bottom. 
<clears throat> so this is kind of the shape of the bottom half of the growler. Um, I'm just going to smooth it out here. Get rid of any slip that's on there. So now we, um, now that we've got the bottom, <clears throat> bottom half done, we'll just use our calipers and uh, kind of get a measurement of how wide we need to throw the top part. So cut that, clean off our mat. and then we will take that off. side. Grab any mat. <clears throat> and this is, um, I think this is about two pounds. I don't really measure for this part because uh, I end up having to cut a lot of it off anyway, so I think two pounds is enough. Um, if you're really being precise, you could probably do it with a pound, but start off by throwing a cylinder, just getting a lot of the extra meat off. And then uh, save myself some trouble, I'm just going to cut off this top half here. these walls, bringing it up into the middle. Basically you're throwing an upside down funnel. Sure, we're still on schedule here. Yep. All right. Now we can shape this. So what I like to do is. Um, kind of get my cone shape at the bottom and then just collar it in to make the uh, the neck and spout. For 
these specific ones, um, kind of relying on a uh, like a cork stopper. So on the outside, it's going to look um, straight up and down, but on the inside, there's going to be like a slight taper, so that a uh, somebody can use a cork to stopper it. Um, I have some swing top caps coming in the mail, but those require like specific dimensions and I gotta dink around with that for a while before I can uh, show other people how to do it. So, um, now that we've got our funnel here, just um, clean up the outside. fun thing that I've been doing um, with these. Since the originals are um, screw-on lids, the, the oil cans, or the brake fluid cans, I just um, make some fake threads here. I'm just using a pointy trim tool. like that. Okay, so this is the, the lid. Um, I'll let these firm up and then I'll show you putting them together. Alright, so the next day I've got uh, the pieces are all leather hard now, so on to the next step which is putting it all together. So. I'm just gonna score and slip um, the lid, and well, actually, let's let's dry fit the lid first. So just cut it off. Um, and kind of make sure it fits in there. Yep, fits good. So. On to the next step. Um, <clears throat> there's going to be this little uh, apron here. Just cut it off. I just use a an exacto blade. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect or pretty. It just it's going to be on the inside. So there we go. All right. Now I'm just going to. Score and slip. Clay is still pretty soft, so don't really need to uh, use slip, but I'll do it anyway just to make sure. Um, and then these have to dry fairly slow because the, um, or you can dry it, you can put a bag over it um, to finish drying it <coughs> um, because if the cone naturally the cone will want to dry faster than the rest of the um, or then it'll want to dry faster than the cylinder and you don't want that because then the cone will shrink away from the joint and then it'll crack and no good so <clears throat> either cover the uh, cone with um, some plastic or put it in a damp box for a couple days um, and then just don't leave it in the sunshine. If you leave it in the sunshine it's gonna crack. Ask me how I know that. Um, so just get some slip on here. Get nice and slippy. is actually some paper clay slip I just uh, I just made it's tissue paper and uh, 
tissue paper and clay with a little bit of um, Darvan 7 in it, some deflocculant, um, so it can be nice and thick, not, not, not a lot of moisture content because um, I had some that I set outside to dry last night and the morning sun came and heated one side of it and just cracked all the all these lids off so I had to go through with some spoos and then uh, repair it so um, yeah don't leave them in the sun to dry even if it's an accident all right so I just wiggled this into place on here <clears throat> and then uh, I like to touch it up with um, one of these it's a uh, just a rubber tipped pointer thing one of these type of deals so I just go into that joint and um, press it in with this make sure it's nice and sealed there all right so that's that part put together let's see this might be might be a little too stiff but Try to make it work. I pulled this handle last night, um, intending to finish the video last night, but um, this stuff hadn't dried out enough yet. So, so over my handle, I just pulled a quick little handle here, um, kind of leaned it over like this so that it would uh, take like kind of a curved shape here. And so we're just gonna. <coughs> dry fit this here uh, eyeball some quick measurements there we go something like that and so I just uh, kind of dry fit it um, I think it's too hard to really mushroom on this out yeah I fit it, mark where it's gonna go. Score it. Since this is this handle's quite dry, so I'm just gonna <clears throat> get the slip on there first so I can kind of soak it up a bit before adding get some extra goopy slip here so it'll squeeze out. <clears throat> All right. So just wiggle it in. And then um, I like to support from the inside up here because the clay is still soft. Um, I don't want to cave it in. All right, so I think that'll do. It's a pretty nice little handle there for a jug. So just let it sit there for a minute and then. Use a sponge to wipe it off. I'm gonna use my little rubber tool here to get around that joint. Make sure it's nice and compressed. <clears throat> and there you go. That's the growler. So yeah. Fill it with your favorite beer. I'm gonna um, decorate this like an STP bottle, like an old vintage STP bottle. I don't have a vintage one on me right now. I just look up a picture on the internet, but um, I'll show you what an actual bottle looks like. A modern bottle. So this is what the bottle looks like. Um, Obviously this one's made out of plastic and it's got all this, um, you know, newfangled marketing wank on it, like uh, protects brake system and stuff like that, but 
Um, the old ones just said STP brake fluid on it. So, and the, the logo's a little bit newer now, but um, yeah, that should be fun. So I'm gonna um, cut these out of vinyl, put them on the silk screen, and then uh, and then make some make some labels that look like that. But yeah, um, so that's part two of the. Uh, of the series, uh, I guess you're not supposed to say the uh, disease name, but uh, on YouTube your videos will be uh, taken down. But <clears throat> here it is, part two, growler, that's beer, and uh, I think the next, um, maybe I'll go over making uh, <clears throat> one of these, like Pilsner uh, mugs, you know, nice big 